That Joseph finds as Michael Jackson thing? That was kind of a mess. But how about a stop-motion biopic about his pet chimpanzee, Bubbles? I'm Sasha Pearl Raver, and this is Screen Junkies News. You heard right, Kitty Boo Boos. Taika Waititi, the Thor Ragnarok director himself, is taking on the story of Michael Jackson's famous pet chimpanzee, Bubbles. The quote, original and offbeat coming of age script topped the famed blacklist and will be brought to life using stop motion animation in the vein of Anomalisa. Helping Watiti adopt the film is adopt. I'm thinking, adopt I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about it. chimpanzees. Yes. <laughs> adapt is stop motion director uh, Mark Gustafson, who previously worked on Fantastic Mr. Fox and is currently co directing Pinocchio with. Guillermo del Toro. Rounding out the producing team is community creator Dan Harmon. Here to talk with me about this is Hal Rednick and Roth Cornett, and on social, we have Matt Key. Huh? Oh yeah. my goodness, you guys! Oh my goodness! Wow, you, were, you were thinking adopt because I know I was. You just I was like to get in that monkey, monkey? business. Yeah, adopt. Yeah. These monkeys? Adopt a chimp. You yeah. to adopt a little chimp. I just want to hug it and love it and kiss it. Super dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Super and, super dangerous. We should yeah. note that was not bubbles. Yeah. Yes. Um, for those of you watching at home. Home, uh, don't think, oh, I, I, I'm inspired by Sasha to go out and get a oh, chimp. Yeah, it no. might rip your face yeah. off. Don't very, very get dangerous. a chimp, just maybe watch a movie about a chimp. Yes. So, all right, let's break this down. Taika Waititi, mm -hmm. yes. genius. Uh, yeah. The dude who helped make Fantastic Mr. Fox, which I love so very yes. much, and is now working with Guillermo del Toro. And anybody who Guillermo del Toro taps, I trust implicitly. Yeah, because he's a, he has great artistic vision. Totally. All of, of his and films. Dan Harmon. Yeah. This is weird. Yes. This is cool. Yeah. This is bubbles. <laughs> yeah. What do you guys think? Um, Hal, you are fresh off the Screen Junkies bus. Yeah. What you thinking, buddy? Well, uh, first off, I feel uh, like I'm qualified to talk about this. Yeah. Having worked with Dan Harmon, uh, having been in a, an episode oh, of Community. Well. I just wanted to drop my oh, IMDb there. <laughs> What episode? My, me my meager IMDb. I didn't know that. What episode <laughs> oh, are you on? Um, it's um, the, fin the finale of uh, season three called Introduction to uh, oh, um, oh, oh, uh, Infinity. In no, uh, or Finality. Yeah. Wait, can we fact check that? Fact check it. Fact yeah. check it. Wait, uh, what it was the play? beginning of season three? The, the season the finale, finale of season three. Who oh, did you play? Um, well, uh, I was the moderator of an air con of an air conditioner smackdown in a Thunderdome type scenario. Of course it you are. mapped um, um, Mad Max this. Beyond Thunderdome, Absolutely. and I said, "Well, boys and girls, uh, it's about to get hot in the sun chamber." It's, <laughs> it's really the highlight of my life. <laughs> that's so, that's yes. awesome. And as but, you are probably the most, you are the most qualified to answer thank this question. You. <laughs> thank you for obliging me. What are you uh, thinking? Oh, so I, it's. Really interesting. It seems like very like kind of Charlie Kaufman esque totally. when I think about it. And you mentioned the stop stop motion animation. Um, to me, whenever I there's very often like in thinking of Fantastic Mr. Fox and or uh, on Anomalisa, um, kind of like this solemnness mm. to stop motion animation and a gravity to it that you don't have in like you know regular uh, drawn animation or some computer animation. There's a real kind of maudlin nature to a lot of yeah. uh, stop motion. Absolutely. I mean, one of my favorite movies of last year was Kubo and the Two Strings. Mm -hmm. I thought that that went so beyond what animation was and went into like true art. Mm -hmm. So I like mm -hmm. the idea. It is a dying art. It's something that is very rarely done. What are you thinking, Roth? Is this the way to approach this movie? Yeah, definitely. I mean, to your point, for, I love Laika, who did Kubo. Mm -hmm. um, Anomalisa was one of my two favorite movies of that year. My two favorite movies that year were wow. Mad Max and Anomalisa. Mm -hmm. And Anomalisa, we talked about this a little bit earlier because yeah. they referenced it in the article, and I wondered why specifically, because that style of stop motion's a little more dirty, and I don't just mean the puppet cunnilingus, which is awful. <laughs> and you should definitely check it out. Um, best movie with puppet cunnilingus ever made, I would nice. say. I think at least in the top five. I, fact check, um, no, yeah, fact, fact check, check that. But I think fact probably. It right now. Yeah, but, yeah, it's, yeah. but it's it it allowed them to be a little unfinished. You know, mm -hmm. it was very rough around the edges, which I think had to do thematically with the story because it was about a man who cannot accept his own humanity or other mm -hmm. people's humanity. Mm -hmm. So it the puppets themselves were really flawed because yeah. it was forcing you to accept flaws. So I'm curious mm -hmm. if if they're gonna use a similar style here or if they just mean anomalies in the sense that it was adult in theme. Yeah. Um, 
Um, but this is about um, a chimp. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, one th- one thing I when, whenever. I'm watching a stop motion animated film. I can't help but remove myself from thinking, oh my God, that's so painstaking. Oh, yeah. The making of this film. That adds an extra level to me. Yeah. I'm and like, a level of respect. Yeah. Think, for sure. Mm-hmm. And it feels organic, like you were saying, and because like in particular, they're using all of these raw materials yeah. and it, you can sort of feel the human touch on it in a mm-hmm. way that you don't necessarily in some yeah. computer animation. This is also making me really miss Claymation. Oh. Yeah. Oh, man, uh, do best. you guys remember Davy and Goliath? Oh, oh my yeah. god. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's such a classic Sunday mornings um, mor- morality tales. <laughs> and and, have and touching. You gotta you know? have them. So Taika Waititi actually gave a quote, which I think is really interesting because he says that this is not going to be a traditional biopic. He says he wanted to focus on a story that blended fact and fantasy, which I love, about an animal trying to make sense of the world. This mm. film is not about Michael Jackson because it's not a story for me to tell or a story I'd be comfortable telling. It's about a chimpanzees fascinating journey through the complex jungle of human life. How much well, do you love that quote? First of all, mm. the fact that he felt like he needed to highlight that this wasn't going to be a traditional biopic is amazing on his part because clearly it's not. Well, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> ah, yes. I will say that, like Michael Jackson, I, I know that he said it's not going to be about Michael Jackson. Here's my hope. Yeah. That we sort of through Bubble's eyes see glimpses of Michael yeah. and that it operates more as kind of like a metaphor for Michael's life because if you think about mm. it, what he was saying, Michael, Jackson grew up in such a weird way. His one of the first uh, oh Michael God, Jackson, the, uh, the Jackson Five songs. That Only you guys he could rock that to. outfit. Yeah. It's amazing. Ben, have you guys ever heard Ben? Ben, the two of us. That sounds so. That is, that from, is that from Sorry. the seventies? Oh. Yeah, and yeah. It, it was about his pet rat. When he was a really little kid, he had this pet wow. rat named Ben. Adopt it, and it was like his only friend because he had so much trouble connecting with other people, oh. and I think wow. that's why he loved animals so much and he felt like he could but if you think about the way that bubbles grew up he was separated from his own kind he grew up in this insulated isolated palace of an environment but that is very surreal and weird not unlike michael that's not the actual bubbles not bubbles not bubbles a reference chimp (laughs) he's he's in this kind of gilded cage yeah it's fascinating because he's out in the world oh i love that that's at the bro museum here in la and whenever i'm there i take a picture of um, if, is, I don't know if you can find uh, this asset, but that's my uh, that is my my Facebook profile pic is me with that statue. Oh, it's the best. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's um, here in LA at the Broad. Yeah, I, I wonder. Um, like, so in talking about the subject matter and it not being um, a biopic or biopic, um, <laughs> it, it is this film going to get into the stuff of Michael Jackson being tried in the court of public opinion and his controversies. Um, mm-hmm. I would hope it would stay away from that. Cause I, don't, I mean, that's it's important um, meaty issues and um, subject matter that we're dealing with there. But yeah, this might not be the, the venue for that. I'm hoping that that's what he's addressing when he says that this is not a film about Michael yeah, Jackson. Good. Because yep. that's not, that to me is not what's interesting. What's interesting yeah. to me is, the what he's talking about about fact and fantasy and that I'm not sure they will ever clearly delineate it for us. Yeah. Which yeah. is my hope. I hope that but, they're not like, okay, now here's this other weird animation style so you know we're in a different world. It is fantasy. He had yeah. he had Neverland in his backyard. Yeah. I mean yeah. um, say what you will, like put, let's put all that aside. He was a genius creative artist and um had a unique vision. Enacted so many times. His music videos are groundbreaking. Yeah. Oh my god. Well yeah. and then I wonder what are they going to do about music for this? That's a, because mm-hmm. in the background, will there? You would expect it's going to be some Michael Jackson, but they yeah. might not be able to get the Michael Jackson. They, like that Jimi Hendrix expensive. movie with Andre Three Thousand. Yeah, yeah. And every Lifetime movie that didn't yeah. include Michelle A. I mm-hmm. think that's going <laughs> to. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but then she got her own. Yeah. Um, so I feel like yes, that would, to keep this to get this movie made. It has to be somewhat inexpensive, is my feeling. Mm-hmm. And I'm so excited. The reason that we're doing this story today, besides amazing, um, <laughs> is because personally, like, I'm so excited that this exists. Because right now, I've talked about this with a lot of people. There's so many films that are really safe. They're mm-hmm. very, mm-hmm. they're very. I mean, we get some weird stuff coming out that does not make a lot of sense for colossal. sure from studios. Loved colossal, but, mm-hmm. but we see so many things that are guided by the studios. The studios, it's so endemic. There's so much money put on them. So there's a fear 
around making bold choices. And I sort of miss the days of like weird crap from yeah. the 70s and 80s where it's like, what is that and how did it get made? And I'm so excited to see this because even if it's not good, which it will be because with this team behind it, it's going to be great. Sure. Um, it will be interesting. I totally agree with you, Roth. Where are the weird cult movies? Where are like, they? Like all the cult movies. They don't movies. get greenlit the mid- they won't yeah. waste the money. Those midnight movies, those movies that become, yeah, like uh, that, like so rewatchable on cable, these little gems, yeah. you yeah. know? Yeah. No, we were talking about this. There needs to be a Blumhouse model for romantic comedies and for low budget action and for just weird stuff yeah. because we're losing independent cinema. But in that, what I think is so interesting is this story actually came out in February. The oh. news of this broke in February, but we're talking about it because it is now like at the top of so many of the Marvel oh. boards. And I think that it's because we are seeing the power of Thor Ragnarok. And people yes. are like, oh man, Taika Waititi, who has made great movies in the past, mm-hmm. but with Thor Ragnarok, they're like, what you gonna do next? And he's like, I'm gonna get weird. I'm gonna get super weird and I'm gonna make a stop motion movie about mm-hmm. bubbles. Like yeah. he's declaring himself as like, I'm gonna be an outsider even when I make a superhero movie. Yeah, I wonder if it, he's doing a little of the uh, one for them, one for yeah. me. One for them, one for me. Yeah. But that being said, even though if uh, Thor Ragnarok is for them, man, that trailer got me Looks way so more excited amazing. than I expected. Totally. He, I got to interview him at Sundance for Hunt for the Wilder People. Yeah. And mm-hmm. he did, I asked him about that saying like, well, so what are you gonna do now? And he said, I'm always gonna go back and make independent movies. There's a lot of stories that I wanna tell. Um, And he said, yeah, he may sort of do the one for them, like the larger film and then the smaller film, because this is a guy that's interested in characters, he's interested in stories. I don't think he's gonna go off. Thor looks is his opportunity to do something very weird with interesting characters. yeah, I, I just I just feel like this is such a treat. They probably won't get the music to say that because sure. of the expense. But the idea for me of this just being almost like the story of Michael without being about Michael, just kind of about like his weird upbringing, his soul. Can I tell a really quick story? Yes, please. So my boyfriend works as a creature effects makeup artist, right? So they do like cool. The Walking Dead zombies, things like that. Mm-hmm. And he worked with this guy, this old crotchety old man from Indiana who was obsessed with Midnight Cowboy, that's another thing. But he used to hang out with Michael Jackson. Whoa. And so they, he was telling him, Michael, you can't go outside. You can never go outside. Michael's like, yes, I can. So he goes out and he tries to go to McDonald's to go through the drive-thru. Obviously, this does not work out. Like, it's insane, it's madness. Like, he's getting Uh, robbed, he's really scared. So he's driving around trying to figure out how to get back home, and he's calling them to come pick him up, and he cannot get them to come pick him up because he doesn't know how to read street signs. They're trying to tell him, Michael, like, God. Look at the street sign, and he's like, "What's that?" And he—that's how insulated, in surreal, a in a bubble, exactly. Bubbles. His, his life was so. To me, there is something about this that touches on that experience yeah. of total disconnect wow. of what life is like for other people. Wow. I love that, or yeah. not even understanding your own nature in a way because no other human being has that experience. Let me, Dang, can I ask cool. you guys a question? Yeah. What do you think Michael Jackson's McDonald's order would be? I'm going to say chicken nuggets. I f- you going chicken nuggets? Chicken nuggets. I'm going happy meal. Happy meal. That's I'm going totally I, happy I, meal. I think right. Michael is a happy a meal happy guy. Meal. You're right. Yeah. I was going toy. McMuffin. But you're right. No, it's you're right. Meal. If it were today, today, <laughs> yep. today, I think it probably would have been a McGriddle because who doesn't want those little oh, beautiful man. pockets mm. and syrup just exploding mm. in their mouths like a gush mm. of candy? Oh, breakfast so all day, <laughs> game changer. <laughs> breakfast all day. <laughs> 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 McDonald's breakfast all day. So I'm another question. <laughs> this is fascinating to me though because as we're talking about this more and like the insular world he exists in, why do you think they're doing this as stop motion? I mean, doing it live action seems impossible. Yeah. You, you, there's a monkey. I mean, but, you know, you got, you know, Dunstan checks in. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you don't want to get like that, cl- like we've flown that close to the oh, sun. Oh, right. So. <laughs> you, don't wanna, you don't want to try, uh, like, you don't want to upset Matt LeBlanc. I, I think it goes a little bit to what I was uh, <laughs> mentioning uh, before, just as far as like, there's like a maudlinness, there's a gravity to um, looking at stop motion, just that medium. Yeah. It, it imparts, uh, I don't know, it's, I think it's easier to convey just the sadness when you see these, the, these figures at rest and moving. I don't, it's so painstaking. Well, so yeah. real. It makes sense to not do it uh, in live action, but then 
why stop motion versus regular animation? Do you think it's also part of that like surreal, yeah, weird? Yeah, it's surreal. Yeah. Like stop mm -hmm. motion immediately, there's something very other to it. Yeah. You know, they they move in a way that is surreal. It feels very distant, and yet you can have that sense of the organic touch, yeah. like we were talking about before. Mm -hmm. So I feel like there's something about that. There's like it's a very um, emotional medium in a way. You can feel kind of the human. The humanity in it, but it also yeah. feels weird. I am yeah. so excited for this movie. The more we talk about it, the more I'm like, oh man, this is going to be <laughs> awesome. But before we talk about how great our ideas are for what might be done, we went to Twitter and we asked you, pitch us a really weird concept. And Ooh. I want to get to you guys in a second. Yeah. So think on that. Pitch mm -hmm. us, like, what is your weird movie fantasy? The weirdest movie you can possibly think of. Let's check in with Matt Key. Uh, what are well, people saying? Before I get to what people are saying, I need to do the fact checking on. Uh, you. Yeah. Oh, fact check. Oh, yeah. Mr. Rudnick does indeed know his IMDb. Oh. Uh, episode 321 was Introduction to Finality. It also starred John Goodman, Rod Cordry, and Jordan Black. Nice. Yeah. So. Uh, and then uh, Roth asked the best puppet scene uh, was a uh, puppet sex scene was almost Howard the Duck. They almost had sex, and that would have been the best. But it wasn't puppet oh. kind of lingus. Oh, yeah, like you I want a specific kind of lingus. Yeah, yeah, well, then you win if you, if you want yeah. a specific yeah. kind of lingus. But. One more uh, contender. Yeah, yeah. I'm not Ooh, sure if there was kind of lingus, but Team America World Police oh, yeah. um, yes. had a some great sex banging movie. puppet There's sex. There's a lot <laughs> of puppet sex. Oh, yeah. That's uh, so true. And a rewatchable weird film for me, Joe vs. the Volcano. Right on. Um, I love yeah, that movie. Really calm. It's very strange. Yes. And anyway, uh, weirdest movie pitches. Uh, Rocky Drago sixty six says, "I don't need to pitch it. It exists." Transformers: The Last Night. Boom. Oh, oh, shots fired. Shots fired. Shots fired. <laughs> uh, Nathaniel Chun says, "Deadpool slash Fast and Furious crossover holiday special." Into it. Mm -hmm. uh, and finally, Delisha. Uh, Russell says, Rocket consumes too much alcohol one night and wreaks havoc around the galaxy, and the Guardians spend the day putting out the fires and trying to bring <laughs> Rocket back under control. Done in a 24-style movie. That, I love it, but that's also every day for the Guardians, yeah. if we're yeah. honest. That's fantastic. How I see those wheels working. Okay. Um, well, I have two. One is um, Matt Key. Yes. Space Hotel Porter uh -huh. because it looks like he's sitting. He's a, he's yeah. checking people in yeah. at a space hotel. Yeah. I'm, at, I'm, at, um, I'm at Hilton Space. Yes, great. Um, my <laughs> second one would be a kind of like a Hannah Montana okay. um, live action movie, Already except weird. inspired by that. And it would be so it would be like a Selena Gomez or Miley Cyrus or whoever playing the superstar part. But then when it flips back to normal life, it's like Steve Buscemi. Oh, oh my God! Wait, so, wasn't there a kind of there was a movie sort of like that, right? Was there? Uh oh! Did I just plagiarize? What? Internet? No, no, no! I'm thinking of a totally different thing. I'm like, there was a Hannah Montana Steve Buscemi crossover. I think you're thinking of that Snickers commercial. No, where it's like, no, the thing that I no, there was oh, a movie yeah. about um, Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> oh, Shallow Hal. Shallow Hal. Yeah. Oh, Shallow yeah. Hal. Which that's is a just, little different than Steve chubby. Buscemi. No, that's yeah. true. That's totally true. It's about superficiality. Do you have one? Do you have one? Or else? I do. But how, yours are so much more I know. fun. Hal's great. Yeah. Hal's, Hal's pretty He's good. He's not on Community for nothing. Mine's you guys. not fun. Mine's not as fun as that. Mine is, but it's actually weird. It's supposed to be fun. It should just be weird. So mine's. Um, Denis Villeneuve, who love. directed Arrival and Prisoners, um, doing a love story, mm -hmm. and it's a man and a woman, and then it's sort of similar to this and Shallow Hal, and the the projections of what they each think the other one are, oh, played by different actors. Love it. So like, it's like fascinating. It's like the relationship that you think that you're in versus the real people. Wow. So it's like the reality versus expectations moment oh, yeah. in Five Hundred Days of Summer. Only it's a whole rom com told that way. Yeah. yeah you just Roth. Oh, you just what. pitched. Uh, uh, like a really great movie idea. <laughs> like I, I, I pitched n drivel and nonsense. <laughs> you, no. Like th no, yours. That's like like that sounds like oh, um, the film that won the Sundance Film Festival. <laughs> <laughs> no ideas are bad ideas on Screen Junkies News. All right, before we go, we're gonna play a quick game of Do Dumper Mary. Do Dumper Mary. Ready, guys? You might know it as. F. Mary, F. Mary Kale. Kale. <laughs> but I don't like killing people. I like to just be dumped. They can go away. They don't have to die. Right on. PYT. Thriller. Billie Jean. Go! Super hard, though, Sasha, because <sighs> Thriller is one of the greatest songs and greatest videos ever made. Yeah. Yep. PYT. Come on. Oh, come on. Yeah. Hey, John Landis. Good job, buddy. Mm-hmm. I All think right. I got mine. Yeah? I'm going to have to marry Thriller. Marry Thriller. Who do you dump? 
I'm gonna have to dump PYT because you know you know how we got into this mess in the first place, and that was doing Billie Jean. Oh, that's oh. Definitely, that's how you got into this mess in the first nice. place. Nice. <laughs> Yours makes like you t just told a story. <laughs> what are you doing? Um, well, I'm just going by the quality of song, okay? Uh, like what I want to just what I want to jam out to in my car. Thriller, the best video, one of the great videos in music history. Um, rewrote the book or whatever, but um, I d I dump it. <gasps> because song wise, PYT is going to get me that much more amped. I'm going to yeah. do PYT. Yeah. And then I'm going to marry Billie Jean. Oh, um, you made an honest woman out of her. Yes. Billie Jean. <laughs> oh, she's been waiting for that for so oh, long. Man, and Will then you, we, we got to do some honorable mentions. Dirty Diana. Yes. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> um, I love Smooth Criminal. Smooth Just, Criminal. Woo! I really want to sing it. Uh, the way you make me feel is what I mm. walked down the aisle to after the ceremony was over. Because I was like, Dun -dun. Uh. but there. But if you think about it, there's like almost no bad. No, you know, if you even going back even to like the Jackson scream Five, is ABC. like still pretty yes. cool. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 oh yeah. Dun, dun, um, dun. What was that video dun, dun, dun. with Eddie Murphy, Magic Johnson? Oh, 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 um, with it's magic. Then they're in like uh, they're in Egypt. Yeah. They're in Egypt. Yeah. Wait, that's um, uh, oh come on, and they spin and it's the sand. Oh, remember oh. the time. Do you remember, remember the time. Thanks, Justin. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's so good. All right, we're gonna go have a massive sing along. Yeah. But Let's do it. we need to know: Are you excited about this Bubbles movie? and what would your pitch for it be? Let us know in the comments below. You can tweet us at SJ News. Make sure to like and subscribe. And of course, you can always click here for more Screen Junkies news. See you soon.